Welcome. My name is Marina Alberti. I'm a faculty at the University of Washington. My presentation is being uploaded. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. I also wanted to thank uh, Gary particularly for leading our effort, which I think is an important step towards synthesizing the knowledge around this theme. Now, the, uh, the task assigned our, our panel is uh, both intriguing and uh, ambitious. And I have to figure out how that works. Okay, yes. All right, thank you. So explore the role of trees within the, gra the greater urban ecosystem and particularly the ecosystem services that they provide and synthesize what we know and what could be some critical um, priority in um, defining a research agenda. Now to put this into context, let me ask to think about the future. <laughs> and what I'm asking is whether to envision whether cities will uh, pretty much uh, evolve uh, around the current trajectory. Will they collapse? This is just an image of Sandy hitting New York the day that we were expected to do this workshop. <laughs> will cities reinvent themselves? Our assumptions about the future really influence the way we think about what research question to ask, as well as the decision we make. But often, those assumptions are based on uh, and constrained by the observations that we have about the past. However, the past can look quite different than the, f than the future. And uh, this shows the great acceleration of key trend in human activities of the last 50 years. If you can see it there. Um, so urban regions, as you know, have emerged as major drivers of environmental change. And between now and 2050, we expect that the urban population uh, will increase by uh, 2.6 billion, which is absorbing pretty much the total growth in, in uh, human population and more. And also, we will see the rural population starting to decline in about a decade. And if all area within, uh, with high probability of uh, uh, expansion undergo the change that is expected in land cover, by 2030, we will have an increase in land cover change of 1.2 million square kilometer, which is ne nearly tripling the land cover uh, change of two, uh, that was up to 2000, with considerable loss, as we indicated here, of habitat in key biodiversity hotspots that were relatively undisturbed by urban development until 2000. Now, to study change in urban e ecosystem and, and their ecosystem function, we, start, we need to start to define a conceptual framework that links drivers of urbanization with patterns of urbanization and resource use and consumption to process both socioeconomic and ecological processes and how they affect ecosystem functions, a variety of functions, and how they feed back into the driver of urbanization. I, we hope that this workshop really aims some way to start to clarify and agree on a framework. And we also need to start to develop more systematic way of studying mechanisms on a variety of ecological uh, functions that urban forests provide, from climate mitigation, carbon sequestration, uh, stormwater regulation, and uh, including also provision of uh, many species of 
um, habitat. And also a range of uh, social benefits, such as social cohesion, as well as increase in real estate uh, values that have been observed, improved health and recreational opportunities, and also cultural and spiritual. But as for all the scientific issues, an important, oops, <laughs> an important question is about definition. What is urban? And as you can imagine, all disciplines have defined urban in very different way, including in our panels. I actually explicitly asked a question to our panel about how they define urban, and all came up with very different definitions from, from normative, the location within an administrative boundaries, to the way in which the census define places or urban areas, urbanizing area, or according to energy required uh, to support them. Also in urban planning, urban morphological characteristics is one way of thinking about defining urban. But scholar urban ecology have started to also place increasing importance to uh, start to study the relationship between ecosystem functions and a gradient of urbanization, ranging from the core to exurban areas to the forest and disturbed area. And this is an example of an empirical study done in um, the region um, where I come from, in the Puget Sound, in my lab, we really um, looked at three transects. And just what I wanted to emphasize here is that when you start to look over the of a gradient of urbanization, we looked at three sections of the transect at 7, 30, and above 30 kilometer, and measured above ground carbon stocks. And as you can see, even in those uh, areas that are considered core, we have a magnitude of carbon stocks that is uh, comparable to the uh, urban uh, to the forest, uh, to the carbon stocks in the Harvard uh, forest, in the uh, measure of the Harvard LTR, and there are some of the reference points there, and including in, in, as well as the Amazon. But this is just a quick example to point at the importance of starting to look at gradient of urbanization. Now, there are several methodological challenges that have been starting to emerge in the study of functions of forest of urban ecosystems. And they go from the complexity and the multi confounders to the scale mismatches. How can we scale up studies that have been done at a very local scale? How we can deal with uncertainty and unpredictability? And what are good metrics of uh, to quantify well-being. We also we need to start to more carefully look at how we can then translate the emerging knowledge into actual actions. Well, we have an excellent panel that will help us uh, address some of those questions. Uh, we have uh, invited and uh, are honored to uh, have Richard Poyot from the USDA and the Forest Service, a bio, uh, bioclimatologist at the, also um, one of the original co-principal investigator in the Baltimore LTR. Diane Pataki, associate professor at the, in the Department of Biology at the University of Utah, and she studies methods for measuring urban plant and soil processes and uh, the this service and services that urban forests provide. Uh, Thomas Whitlow, uh, associate professor um, in the College of Agriculture and Life Science at Cornell. He has been working for 30 years studying uh, the effect of uh, transport of air pollutants and the implications for uh, also for human health. And also, uh, 
hopefully we will have uh, Stephanie Pinze to join us uh, um, virtually. Uh, she's an adjunct professor and, and director of the California Center for Sustainable Urban System at UCLA. Thank you and um, welcome. Here are the four major questions that we have asked the panel to discuss. What is the current state of the science? What are some examples of uh, well-documented um, findings and conclusions from those studies? What are the remaining challenges and open questions? And what are additional data and observation that are required to resolve those questions? Thank you.